here today to talk to you a little bit or a lot, depending on how much people participate. But I'm here to talk to you about addiction and our natural addictive tendencies, um, our ability to become obsessive, obsessive compulsive when it comes to uh, being, feeling isolated or feeling stressed like we do. Like currently, see, I have this, this sweet little, little boy in a kennel and he's feeling very isolated and alone. And so I'm going to let him out so he doesn't chirp the entire time. <laughs> oh my goodness. Anyway, I, yes, I have, I have two little foster babies that I'm taking care of. So just please be patient uh, if they get rowdy uh, while we're chatting, because this is a really important topic and I really want people to feel like they can uh, ask me questions or um, really participate in the conversation. Because even if you are, don't consider yourself an alcoholic or an addict or that you uh, don't have any, any you know, chronic issues, we all, all have, our self-defense and we all have ways that we try to sit aside, essentially we sit aside our grief. And so when people are having obsessive compulsive thoughts or addictive tendencies where uh, when they feel low, they try to uh, diminish that feeling with food, liquor, drugs, porn, whatever your thing is, maybe it's relationships, maybe you're enabling or codependent, whatever it is, uh, if, if you are, have a tendency to do that. And I know that we all do on some level. All of those things are brought up in times like this when we are uh, feeling completely out of control of our circumstances and our lives and oftentimes our environments. So uh, I wanted to talk about what we need to do with that. And the first thing that I really wanna talk about with you today is uh, addiction. Uh, to, to, to transform addiction or any addictive tendency, it is a surrender to grief. That means that if, if we are feeling uh, overwhelmed with an idea or a thought or a concept, that we are trying to overcome that with a substance or an activity. And what we really need to do is take a deep breath and allow the grieving process, the tears, Sometimes the maniacal laughter, sometimes we need to have a temper tantrum. <laughs> we need to have an emotional expression that really allows us to uh, shift us out of covering up what we're really feeling, feel it, acknowledge it, and then move beyond it, right? Addiction happens when we immediately sit aside our feelings and try to do something else. And then we wanna keep doing that thing but the more we do that thing, the better it doesn't feel. We don't feel better when we keep doing it because we never get that high or that excited experience from the first time we can overcome a bad feeling with something that we want or like to do. Okay. So I wanted to, to uh, read you something out of <clears throat> my book coming out in August. I, I'm, I really wish that I had this book to, to get to you now because it's filled with, it's almost a workbook that's filled with things uh, that talks about fear and how to deal with exactly what we're going through today. So conquer your karmic relationships. And uh, here I'm talking about uh, cultural karma, but I really want to talk about uh, each individual in humanity experiences a personal impact when we are taught to ignore, diminish or repress any aspect of ourselves. Repression of this energy amasses internally when we have confusion about the elements of true power, identity, or superiority. Okay? So anytime we don't feel in control of our environment, we try to take control of our environment. And it could be our internal emotional environment. It could be our external environment. Right? Our internal environment is, is, uh, is grief, sadness, or emotion. Our external environment is, is, is trying to control it with anger and blame. Those are two, two dynamics that we use to try to control people around us or an environment that really isn't ours to control. And so I wanted to talk to you about the concept of power. What does power mean and how does it relate to addiction? Every time we diminish ourselves and try to sit aside 
how we feel, right? We're not listening to ourselves, therefore others don't listen to us, right? We, we feel disempowered. Power is the idea of being and feeling self-sufficient. So true power, true spiritual power is when you feel and know that you are self-sufficient. Has nothing to do with other people, what they can do, what they can't do, or uh, your relationship to them, right? Sometimes we feel as if people have power over us, but the truth is, is we give them that power at some point on some level at some time. And we can take that power back at any time and become self-sufficient. Uh, identity. Identity is knowing who you are and embracing all of it without shame. Okay. So, uh, whatever you have going on, whatever you like or dislike is what you like or dislike. It's who you are. It's what you want. And you have a right to be that way and to have that without feeling any shame. Shame is what we feel when we see other people's reaction and oftentimes inability to control who we are because they feel, they feel uncomfortable. So when you can recognize that people seeking to take control or to judge you or to create some sort of conflict uh, because of who you are, that's about them and them not feeling comfortable with who they are and their ability to control their environment or their inability to control others. So uh, the final thing is superiority, okay? Oftentimes when we want to take that extra drink, right? I'm not, I'm not talking about addiction in terms of, right now I know uh, the stats are telling us that, <laughs> that people, people right now are buying liquor and guns. That's, that's not good. <laughs> Best liquor sales probably for, for, the, for, the, for the decade right now because people are home and at first it kind of started out to be a little fun uh, because we weren't really sure what was going on. And we, you know, there are some people out there saying, oh, are, are, those people over there are really uh, making, making a, a big deal about a nothing. But in truth, there was this building aura or energy that was starting to build in every community because what was happening was starting to impact all of us. <laughs> And when we started to be required to stay home, it was really easy to, hey, pick up a six pack or get that extra bottle of wine or, or pick up your favorite liquor, even if you don't normally drink, and then, and then start drinking earlier, an hour earlier, two, hour early, two hours earlier, or day drinking, right? All of those were entertainment, and they're entertainment until they're not entertainment, until you just don't feel your best or you just are not your best because you begin to give your power up to your behavior. Okay. And that's the level of, 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 uh, addictive behavior that I'm talking about. Of course, if you are an alcoholic or an addict and you know, and embrace that there are AA meetings and, you know, things online, there are lots of different forms that, um, I highly recommend that you log on to. And then there's this whole other group of people who who just participate, kind of not really knowing where where that process started. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to read you this last thing and I just lost my page. So give me one second, one second to find it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Superiority is actively being all we can be, recognizing our power by supporting others to acknowledge and cultivate their own. We become more powerful. We become more powerful the more we embrace the power of others and empower them to own who they are. <laughs> hilarious. Talk about controlling your environment and not being able to. Okay. These personal truths are not, they are individual, they are not cultural. Mm, excuse me. Thank you. These truths are individual, not cultural. 
and they become active the more each human includes all other life in their construct of society. Creating space for all forms of life to live simultaneously and peacefully. It is up to the individual to create a life that teaches these truths. And clearly, on a societal level, there is a lot of trial and error on that path. Okay, so is there anybody out there? Hello there. I see somebody found me. Hi, Deb. Nice to see you. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about uh, before I go on to the, to the next thing is the understanding that things have to break apart before they reestablish continuity and empowerment. Things are, are breaking apart so they can be built back up again. That's one of the things that's happening right now. And that's one of the things that's the hardest thing for us to do when we have addictive tendencies. That means we keep doing the same thing over and over again, hoping that we're gonna get a different result the next time we do it. Or we keep doing it, hoping we're gonna get that same excited feeling and we don't. So oftentimes we seek the truth. And one of the truth seekers that we embrace is anger, anger and blame. Blame, sometimes blaming ourselves, sometimes blaming other people. But anytime we use the dynamic of blame, we are creating a conflict that we are paying attention to so that we can dig more deeply into how and why a situation is happening the way that it is. And so understand every time you feel anger, it's okay to feel that anger. It's not okay to point that anger at the people that you're with or at another person. Okay, it's not it's not good to point your anger at somebody. It's okay to be anger angry and express that anger. Gosh, I'm really angry right now. And I'm also very happy that the puppies have gotten quieter. <laughs> I was not meant to have puppies. But we're all doing very well. Yes, yeah, see. See, we can't blame them cuz they're little puppies. Okay? So when we want to blame someone or something, it's really our way of really looking into uh, why, <laughs> why something started the way that it did and why it's continuing. So letting yourself feel anger, recognize your blame, but understand that the blame is telling you something that you need to know in order to find peace in the situation. Okay, uh, the last thing that I wanted to share with you today, and give me just a second to find that for you, is the art of saying no. When we have addictive tendencies, we either don't tell ourselves no, or we don't tell others no. So, No is a one word sentence. It's not rude, obstinate, or selfish. It claims a boundary that is desired and must be respected without explanation. Learning to use the word no is an art form that grows as we do. One of the lesser known commandments, thou shalt not fear the use of no. Learning to say no can be one of the most loving things that you can do for your friends, lovers, and soulmates. Does anybody have any thoughts about saying no and their ability to set boundaries, either with themselves or others? Learning to say no to yourself and to others, again, is one of the most loving things that you can do. And I'm going to give you an affirmation that you can write down. So get a pen and write this down so that any time... Your emotions get high, too many people in your face. You're having a hard time communicating what you need, either by saying no to yourself or saying no to somebody in your space. I am the master of my mind at all times, on all levels. No one can speak for me or through me. Okay? So I'm going to read that again. I am the master of my mind on all levels at all times. 
No one can speak for me or through me. When you claim your space and you own who you are without shame, you begin to find peace in saying, no, I can't. No, I won't. No, thank you. Not right now. It allows you some, some space and some freedom to then think about not taking that extra drink or ordering those fries or uh, eating things or doing things that you know aren't going to make you feel good about yourself or not make you feel good at all. Right now, it's really important that not only we feel good about ourselves because that amplifies and strengthens our immune systems, but it's also really important that we uh, set boundaries with ourselves and own our space and take the actions that are going to uh, help us to continue finding peace and compassion with ourselves and others. So that's, that's, that's what I wanted to say to you today. And I'm really glad that you tuned in. Uh, again, I'm going to, I'm going to be here every Friday. Uh, Steven. Oh, hi, Steven. Okay. Uh, Steven says, uh, what are some ways to deal with this feeling of spiraling out of control due to our powerlessness in these, in this situation? Oh my God. <laughs> you can't hurt puppies. No. Um, okay. So the, the, the first thing that you need to do so that you don't spin out of control is stop, take a breath in through the nose for a count of four exhale for a count of four and tap your heart chakra. This is your heart's over here, but this is officially the heart chakra and you tap on your heart. It's a little simple movement. Reminds you to breathe in for four, exhale for four and tap your heart. That's the first thing that you do. Okay. Once you've done that, you've stopped, you've intervened that spiraling. You've intervened on it. Then you can take a step back and ask yourself, what is it you really need or want? What is it? What is it in this situation that you need? Do you need to feel what you're feeling? Do you need to acknowledge what is make you feeling this way? Do you need to set a boundary in a situation with another person, with a loved one or a friend or acquaintance or someone you don't even know? What, what is it you need? Give yourself by tapping your heart chakra, a few moments to acknowledge what that is, feel the emotion, allow it to move through you. Okay. Let's say you're at home and, and let's say you have two rooms and you just get angry. You're angry. You're frustrated. Anger is the energy that, that precedes grief. So the more you allow anger to move through you, it's going to lead you to grief. Okay. Do your best to walk away from the situation. One of, put up a finger. It's not being mean. It's not being rude. It's saying, I'm going to come back later. Excuse me. I'm going to go in the other room and I'm going to scream. I'm going to cry. I, do you know the other day I woke up to a poop fest? Every dog in the house, I've got three of them right now. And these two little, there's two little precious ones just like this. And everybody, they'd pooped in their cat, they'd poop everywhere. And I lost my mind. I walked into the kitchen and I screamed at the top of my lungs. <laughs> I do great in, you know, intense situations, right? I do great when there's deep trauma, but it's, you know, the poop fest. I just can't handle that. It's, it's petty, I know, but that's just me. So I went into the kitchen and I unloaded my frustration and then I came out. Gently took the doggies, put them outside, cleaned up the mess and called it a day. It was fine. But I needed to give myself that minute to unload all the angst that I had about not being able to control this, this small little space that I have sharing with all of these beings. So I am certain that that's the same thing that everyone is feeling. Uh, so take a deep breath, tap your heart. Figure out what it is that you're feeling. Allow yourself to feel it. And if, 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 it's, if it's a big emotion, feel free to go to the other room. You don't need to do it 
with an audience. It's not bad to do it with an audience, but understand there's got to be a lot of communication that goes with that to make sure that the people around you or the beings around you know that it's not their fault. It's not about them. And it is about you and what you need. So going to another room, experiencing that, and then allowing yourself to move through and then do what you know you need to do. Always, if you will allow yourself to feel the emotion that you're feeling, you're going to be less inclined to want to drink, to want to smoke, to want to eat, to do anything that's going to sit aside uh, all of that anxiety. So thank you, Stephen. That was a great question. I do want to address really quickly the idea of anxiety because we are all having anxiety uh, on some level, a little bit, a little bit, all of us, and it's chronic. And <laughs> Stephen says, thanks. And also think watching you with your puppy on your lap helps. It totally does. See, cause you just makes it all okay. Um, we all have anxiety, subtle anxiety right now. And it's making, a, giving us a, maybe a, a, a rough stomach um, or makes us feel like slightly crying, makes us really feel frustrated or irritable. And just know that everybody's psychic energy to varying degrees of intensity are experiencing th these things. And so that we are all, okay, no, we're not going to do that because there's a, there's a fire brewing if I let her down. Um, we're all feeling it. And sometimes it's, it's some days it's going to be intense and other days it's going to be a little less. And so just know that and be patient with yourself. Hi, Eric. Thank you. Nice to see you. And yes, uh, eating the house down. Yes. Faith says, talks about eating the house down. Yes. I completely understand. Cooking is one of the things that I love and I love to have a glass of wine while I cook. And I'm having to be uh, really, because now I'm eating earlier and I'm like, I can't, I can't drink that. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do it how I used to, you know, right now I'm used to being home uh, working all day. But now that everyone else is home, it's kind of made me a little foggier than I normally am. And it may, it's changing. You know, I'm having to adapt my behavior to the energy of other people. So, you know, as we all are just in our space, we may not know them. Um, so, uh, yeah, just know that we are all, when they say we're all in this together, what that really means is that we are all literally next to each other in this, doing this. And so you can either embrace that and create a dynamic that allows for compassion and patience for yourself and others. And, uh, you know, or you can, um, you know, go uh, on a smoking bender or whatever. <laughs> Woo, don't do that. Tap your heart. Yeah. Okay. So thank you so much. Is there any other questions that anybody who is on right now? So we should acknowledge the anxiety. How do we tame it? Oh, that's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because here's the thing. This subtle anxiety may not go away for a while. And I want, I want you to understand this. Uh, we are used to relating to anxiety as trauma. Anxiety usually comes when our fight or flight system tells us that something bad is going to happen and that we must beware. We must be hypervigilant. We must pay attention. When that happens, I'm going to show you this little boy. Oh, look at this. This is McDuff. Say hi, McDuff. So uh, when we have that chronic anxiety, it's a little bit every day. Understand that the more we begin to relate to that chronic anxiety as if it is, it's not doom and gloom. It, its presence does not, uh, uh, prophecy, something bad or a trauma that is about to happen. If that's not what it means, what does it mean? What is happening right now in this mass societal world, global culture, cultural trauma, because some people, wh while I am lucky to be here in a heated home with plenty of food and cute puppies, you know, there are people out there. There are people, hundreds of thousands of people who are going to be dying alone. <laughs> And, uh, you know, not to bring the vibe down, but seriously, what, what we have, that's, that's Paloma. 
um, there is a global shifting of energy and our vibration literally is shifting on all levels. We are learning to uh, begin to open our minds and our hearts to uh, not only to ourselves and our own needs, but to acknowledge other human beings, humanity and their needs without question, without distinction, without discrimination. And that requires a subtle vibrational shift globally on everyone's part. So all of us who make it through this, we are all shifting our vibration and that subtle anxiety, that subtle anxiety uh, is gonna be there. And so I want you to tell yourself, you're okay. It's okay, hi anxiety, nice to see you. I'm glad to see you, you're raising, you're raising my vibration and thank you. I'm thank you know, I, I know that you're not meaning any harm for me. I know that you are not alerting me to any harm. I know that everything is just fine and I am just fine and everything is going to be okay. This too shall pass, okay? So um, remind yourself the anxiety is to help raise your vibration so that we all can become in alignment, in integrity with one another, so that we can become first in alignment with ourselves and our own integrity, right? We've got to become in alignment with ourselves and our open heart. We've got to do that before we can truly be open to other people. So I think that's it. I think that that, uh, that covered what I wanted to say about that. A really great affirmation that you can use for that, for your anxiety, is I choose goodness. I see goodness and I am goodness. I choose goodness, I see goodness, and I am goodness. <laughs> now you've met the menagerie, that's, that's a gizmo. <laughs> Uh, Eric says, don't know if you have covered talking to kids and dealing with their anxiety. Okay. Uh, I haven't done that, but it's the same as adults. Uh, believe it or not, um, helping a child to understand that their real desire when they have anxious and they have a, a raw stomach or their stomach hurts or their head hurts, uh, getting them to breathe and tap their heart. Okay. Tapping the heart. And uh, letting them know that this is uh, something that's, it's that connection that they're having with all of these other people that's making them feel uh, this anxiety. It's their connection to others. And oftentimes, uh, if the parents in the home are feeling at peace, then the child will feel at peace. Wh Whoever is energy, ever, there's always a strong personality like Paloma. This is Paloma. Yes, yeah, see. Oh, now, now, she, now she becomes quiet because I put her on camera. Uh, there's always a strong personality, and the strongest personality in the home can really uh, manage. <laughs> it's hilarious. Can uh, can be the one to manage the balance in the house. So. Uh, Always make sure that you talk about it. Let them know that they are free to say they don't feel good, to say their tummy hurts, and then to ask them how they're feeling. What, what are they trying to control that they're unable to control? Okay, uh, talking with them, getting them to feel confident and comfortable to talk about what is going on. Uh, you, can, you can let them know, hey, I can't control what's going on in the world, but I know we're gonna be all right. You know, and if you give them that consistent message over and over again by giving them the opportunity to feel what they're feeling and describe their feeling, helping them to describe their feeling, sometimes they feel something and they don't know the words to use, uh, that creates a level of anxiety. <laughs> this is the most dynamic. <laughs> this is the most. This is the most dy dynamic uh, uh, session I have ever done. Oh my God, it's hilarious. We are having so much fun. So uh, Eric, I hope that that covers, covers you, you to uh, make sure that, uh, let them know that it's natural. Let them know that it's helping them 
to be aware and present to their situation. That's what anxiety does is it helps us to become aware and present to our situation in, uh, at all times. And again, the person who has the strongest personality in the home, they can oftentimes, how they, how they relate, no, 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 don't eat the remote. Um, <laughs> the animals are wilding. Yes, they are. Oh my God, it's hilarious. Um, okay, so anybody else got anything for me right now? Because we are having so much fun. Do you know the minute I sign off, everybody everybody's going to go to their to their bunkers and uh, take a nap as if nothing happened. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, okay. Of course, uh, I will. I will say uh, your sense of humor. We need it desperately right now, and there are times when you're not feeling very humorous. Try to find a video on YouTube. Think of your most favorite uh, comedian uh, or go like, you know, when all else fails, I go to Carol Burnett because I grew up with her and she kind of reminds me of my mom in some ways and she's hilarious and it's good, clean, fun. But whatever it is that you like, watch a video, do something to kind of shift your perspective and and know that, that no matter what happens, the world is gonna move forward and things are gonna get better. We're gonna, we are gonna make our money back. Uh, we are going to get our jobs and our businesses uh, rolling again. Uh, some of our loved ones, we are going to lose them forever. But there are many people who we are not going to lose. And there are going to be so many millions of people that we're going to be able to celebrate uh, in this new vibration, in this new world that we are clearly creating for ourselves. And uh, I'm really grateful, grateful that you're here with me on this journey because, um, frankly, I couldn't do it, uh, do it without you. So thank you. Um, okay. Well, that's a good one. So, uh, uh Faith, was, Faith and I had a little conversation last week and we were talking about, uh, when we're dealing with money. And in fact, I, I dealt with this on, uh, the video from last week. And so you sh should, uh, if you, if you want this in its entirety, cause I really talk about, oh, you know, write it down on a calendar. If you have a bill that's due, like any, any information that you need to have, you're, I know there's a lot of families home who are homeschooling and working and trying to keep all of this stuff together. Don't have multiple calendars, have one calendar and put all the information in one place so that you can always refer to it. When you do that, when you create that, it makes your world feel more manageable. And then the next thing is if you're feeling like you are lacking something, or in lack, there just isn't enough, I want you to take a moment and make a list of what you do have. Take a moment to acknowledge your assets, uh, whether it's your sense of humor, your good looks, your charm, your warm home, your food, your comfortable chair that you like so much, whatever it is that you have. Some people don't have a lot and some people have a ton. So take moments and really, uh, recognize and embrace what you do have. And, and that's going to uh, shift your focus. I understand that when we focus on what we do have, that gives the creator the opportunity. It gives the creator a blueprint to give us more of that. Wherever we, we put our intention and our focus and what we repeat, this we started out this whole thing with talking about addiction and addiction is repeating the same thing over and over again, hoping it to change. Okay, so the more you can focus on the things that you do have and lay out clearly what you need, you have given a blueprint for the universe, for your creator to fulfill all of that for you. Okay, so gosh, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for sharing this time for me today. Again, I'm Tracy Dunblazer. I'm a spiritual empath and shaman. And uh, I'm going to see if I can find a way to get this book out to people uh, earlier. Um, but by all means, if you need something, go to my website, tracydunblazer.com. That's T-R-A-C-E-E-D-U-N-B-L-A-Z-I-E-R.com. And uh, again, next Friday, 12 noon, it's a date. Please be there and share it with your friends if you've got questions. Um, I don't know what I'll be talking about next week. If anybody has any ideas of what uh, what you'd like me to talk about, feel free to send me a note on Facebook or Instagram. And again, 
Be good to yourself and then you'll be good to others. So thank you.